perhaps the most famous peace document signed by the countries across the world which marked the end of World War I. Hello and welcome to UPSC History View. Today, let's learn about the Treaty of Versailles. The Treaty of Versailles, a peace document signed at the end of the World War I, was signed by the Allied and Associated Powers and by Germany in the Hall of Mirrors in the Palace of Versailles, France on June 28, 1919. The Treaty of Versailles took force on January 10, 1920. When the German government asked US President Woodrow Wilson to arrange a general armistice in October 1918, it declared that it accepted the 14 points he had formulated as the basis for a just peace. However, the Allies demanded compensation by Germany for all damage done to the civilian population of the Allies and their property by the aggression of Germany by land, by sea, and from air. Further, the nine points covering new territorial consignments were complicated by the secret treaties that England, France, and Italy had made with Greece, Romania, and each other during the last years of the war. The treaty was drafted during the Paris Peace Conference in the spring of 1919, which was dominated by the national leaders known as the Big Four, David Lloyd George of Britain, George Clemenceau of France, Woodrow Wilson of the United States, and Vittorio Orlando of Italy. The first three in particular made the important decisions. None of the defeated nations had any say in shaping the treaty and even the associated allied powers played only a minor role. The German delegates were presented with a fate accompli. They were shocked at the severity of the terms and protested the contradictions between the assurances made when the armistice was negotiated and the actual treaty. Accepting the war guilt clause and the reparation terms was especially odious to them. The population and territory of Germany was reduced by about 10% by the treaty. In the west, Alsace and Lorraine were returned to France, and the Saarland was placed under the supervision of the League of Nations until 1935. In the north, three small areas were given to Belgium, and after a plebiscite in Schleswig, northern Schleswig was returned to Denmark. In the east, Poland was resurrected, given most of formerly German West Prussia and Poznan, given a corridor to the Baltic Sea, and given part of the Upper Silesia after a plebiscite. Gdansk or Danzig was declared a free city. All of German's overseas col colonies in China, in the Pacific, and in Africa were taken over by Britain, France, Japan, and other allied nations. The war guilt clause of the treaty deemed Germany the aggressor in the war and consequently made Germany responsible for making reparations to the allied nations in payment for the losses and damage they had sustained in the war. It was impossible to compute the exact sum to be paid as reparations for the damage caused by the Germans, especially in France and Belgium at the time the treaty was being drafted, but a commission that assessed the losses incurred by the civilian population set an amount of 33 billion US dollars in 1921. Although economists at the time declared that such a huge sum could never be collected without upsetting international finances, the Allies insisted that Germany be made to pay, and the treaty permitted them to take punitive actions if Germany fell behind in its payments. The Big Four, especially Clemenceau, wanted to make sure that Germany would never again pose a military threat to the rest of Europe, and the treaty contained a number of stipulations to guarantee this aim. The German army was restricted to 100,000 men, the general staff was eliminated, the manufacture of armored cars, tanks, submarines, airplanes, and poison gas was forbidden and only a small number of specified factories could make weapons or ammunitions. All of Germany, west of the Rhine, 
and up to 30 miles or 50 km east of it was to be a demilitarized zone. The forced disarmament of Germany, it was hoped, would be accompanied by voluntary disarmament in other nations. The treaty included the Covenant of the League of Nations, in which members guaranteed each other's independence and territorial integrity. Economic sanctions would be applied against any member who resorted to war. The League was to supervise mandated territories, the occupied Saar Basin and Danzig and to formulate plans for reducing armaments. The treaty also established the Permanent Court of International Justice and the International Labour Organization. The Treaty of Versailles was bitterly criticized by the Germans, who complained that it had been dictated to them, that it violated the spirit of the 14 points and that it demanded intolerable sacrifices that would wreck their economy. In the years after it was ratified, the Treaty of Versailles was revised and altered, mostly in Germany's favor. Numerous concessions were made to Germany before the rise of Adolf Hitler, and by 1938 only the territorial settlement articles remained. Many historians claim that the combination of a harsh treaty and subsequent lax enforcement of its provisions paved the way for the upsurge of German militarism in the 1930s. The huge German reparations and the war guilt clause fostered deep resentment of the settlement in Germany, and when Hitler remilitarized the Rhineland in 1936, a violation of the treaty, the Allies did nothing to stop him thus encouraging future German aggression. Thank you for listening to this discussion on the Treaty of Versailles. For more such discussions, get the UPSC Practice app from the App Store.